Okay, so again, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of a refresh. Uh, the purpose of the City Artist Program is to support research, development, and or presentation of new or remounted or in-progress work or ideas um, by Seattle-based artists, curators, cultural makers, um, in the following disciplines. So again, I mentioned that it alternates, the City Artists Program alternates from year to year. This year, we are focusing and accepting applications from artists who work in literary arts, all genres, uh, media, digital, film, and this includes screenwriting. Uh, and lastly, visual arts and all the genres, and that is a broad, broad category. So literary media, digital film, or visual arts are um, the disciplines for this cycle. Um, we also accept traditional interdiscipl interdisciplinary arts, uh, but again, those must be in those three top art forms or art discipline categories. Um, we do encourage a broad range of artistic and cultural expression uh, for the pool of applicants. And um, so we strongly encourage um, all uh, art forms uh, in literary genres, I should say, in literary, media, digital, film, and visual arts. A little bit of uh, uh, history or background about city artists. Uh, these are uh, tax-based uh, dollars uh, that support artists, creatives, cultural makers, um, their ideas and, uh, and uh, artistic work that benefit the citizens of Seattle because these are tax-based dollars. Uh, and so the, uh, the program does include a presentation in the city of Seattle that benefits uh, the residents of Seattle. And I can talk a little bit more about that later in the PowerPoint. Um, again, we have a relatively, not so new, but relatively new online system called Flux. And it does require you initiating an account with the username and password. And again, my colleague, Marshawn, will talk a little bit more about that uh, at, the, uh, at the end of the overview. Um, it is the city artist uh, application is a uh, relatively new and simplified uh, application that is more artist centered versus project centered. Um, so you will not so much be asked questions about a defining a project and a budget, but more uh, related to you as an artist and your work your practice, your themes, all of that. And again, I will talk in more depth about that later in the uh, PowerPoint. Um, the City Artist Award is a two-year contract. So the um, selected artist, if selected, uh, you will have a, uh, you will sign a, a two-year contract that starts January 2024 and goes through November of 2025. So if needed, you have, a, uh, you know, almost two years to, in which to research, develop, and present your project. But if your project is ready to present in February of 2024, that's totally allowable as well. Okay. Um, you also, with the, the kind of new and improved city artist uh, program, you also have an option to complete uh, either a written or a verbal uh, sort of evaluation report. And um, that means that, you know, when you finish your project, we, you have uh, submitted your final invoice uh, and you submit uh, all the information about how your project went, how it unfolded, what worked, what didn't work. Uh, you have the option instead of writing a report that you and maybe one or two other uh, awarded artists will have a an online sort of sharing out of what happened during your project and what worked and what didn't work, lessons, tips, anything of that nature. And that really allows for any lessons or tips to be shared out with your peers instead of responding in paper and uh, no one 
uh, gets to benefit from those um, lessons that you've learned. And that's an option. OK. OK, so uh, eligibility for this program, aside from the disciplines um, that you are a uh, the applicant is a generative artist, cultural maker or curator um, who researches, develops and presents work on an ongoing basis or on a regular basis. Um, in addition, uh, you are a the applicant is a uh, resident of the city of Seattle and or has permanent long term workspace in the city of Seattle. Uh, with an address uh, where you receive mail. And um, and again, for the purposes of application, you do need to submit a street address and not a PO box for that reason, because we need to know that you are either a permanent, permanent, permanent resident of Seattle or you have permanent workspace in Seattle. Um, again, that uh, applicants, uh, are 18 years of age or over and not enrolled in any at any level of uh, schooling, be it um, high school, college, masters, uh, or uh, even doctoral level um, at the time of submitting your application. Um, and uh, at also be the originator of the of any proposed idea or venture that is associated with the application. Although the application does not ask you to discuss a project, if funded, you will, you and I will have a discussion about defining what that venture idea concept project will be. And uh, so in that instance, you as the applicant must be the originator of that uh, idea or venture or project. Lastly, if you are uh, an applicant artist, curator, or cultural maker who also leads an organization, uh, then this or even uh, uh, a group, then you, you really need to differentiate the idea, the venture, the project from your organization. So this is really about you, your growth as an individual, uh, whether it's artistic, administrative or otherwise. This is really uh, an opportunity for you and your practice and your work. OK, so the application uh, also um, gives you the uh, choice of uh, uh, amount of request. So you select only one and that those uh, three levels are 2000, 5000 or 8000. And again, you want to select an amount that best reflects this idea, concept, or a project work that you, you will propose should you get selected. So that's something you wanna consider at the onset when you're filling out the application. Um, and again, just to reinforce uh, the project, the actual project proposed project is not discussed at the time of the application. In the application, it is discussed if you are selected and then it's discussed uh, between you and me and uh, and we're, we'll tweak that project definition and parameters at that time, but not for the application. And I will reinforce at this point also that if you, uh, and I will get to this, I'm not sure if it's the next slide or not, but the criteria is really what informs um, uh, the narrative in the application. Okay. And here are the narrative questions. Um, there are two narrative questions in the application. And again, they're focused on you as the artist and your work, your practice, and what informs that practice. Okay, so the first question really asks about your influences, uh, what inspires you, what has shaped your work. Um, 
and um, you know you want to talk about things like uh, themes or techniques, approaches, whether you do solo work, group work, uh, and how that work or your practice has evolved over time. Maybe over the last three to four years, maybe three years ago, you were working in smaller scale, you were working solo um, with a, a particular themes, and now you want to pivot. You want to take a you want to take a dive into new territory and work in larger scale, or you want to work collaboratively with another artist. You know, it doesn't have to be all of these, but whatever is evolving, whatever is changing and growing for you, that's what you want to talk about and how it your you and your work have sort of developed over time. That is what. Uh, the story that you want to tell in that question number one. And question number two is more about your uh, your vision about yourself and your work, where you see both in, in the next, let's say, three to five years, where might you be headed, uh, what is piquing your interest, you know, why, what might be piquing your interest now that is going to take you into new territory uh, and that is going to really in better um, build out your skills, build out your capacities, build out your networks, okay, and how that's going to happen. So really, it's uh, it's a it's a really different uh, application because you are really wanting to tell and build out a compelling story about you and your practice, you and your work, and uh, and where it might be headed. And um, a, a group. A panel of, of peer artists are going to be reviewing uh, the applications and they're going to be really using these three criteria. And th this criteria is in the guidelines. It's also, I believe, in the application. Uh, so this is what really informs the narrative that you're going to include in your application. Um, but again, it's describing the development of your practice over time and your work. Um, so again, each of the three criteria that are listed here are at equal value. Each of them are 20 points. Uh, experience and potential, influence, inspiration that has shaped your work, uh, describing anything that has also informed your work in terms of experience, training, um, in the from your past work and current work. Um, second, uh, artistic growth and vision. Uh, again, your um, your app, your your practice and how skills, themes, or scale has is where is it going in the future? What is and what is really sort of um, prompting those changes? You know, was it a book? Was it a trip, a travel? Or was it uh, maybe your last project and your last collaborators, uh, some community issue uh, or agenda? Whatever it is that is really driving your work is what you want to talk about and where it's taking you in the future. Um, lastly, the body of work. And body of work really is relating to the work sample, which is also a, re a required element of the application. The work sample, again, the uh, guidelines for that work sample are both in the application and in the guidelines. Um, there is a limit to the work sample, and you want to play pay really close attention to those parameters so that uh, uh, it's all whatever the work sample is, is really um, limited to a five minute equivalent. Uh, so that obviously if it's an audio or video work or film work, um, it's going to be five minutes. So it can be two and a half minutes of audio and two and a half minutes of film or video. So that combined, it's five minutes. Uh, if it's literary work, 10 pages is, um, is equivalent to five minutes. That's the maximum, 10 pages. 
um, with vi with images and visual arts, it's a maximum of eight images. That is the equivalent to five minutes. So if you're mixing up, you know, literary and images, then you just want to cut those in half so that you have five pages and four images. Um, and I'm just going to give that as a quick example, but those examples are both in the guidelines and in the application. Uh, work samples are really important part of your application, and you do want to uh, be selective of those and make sure that you give um, in the pro in the work sample description box that you give. Uh, there's also a list of uh, recommended items you want to include for the work sample description that best sets up the work sample for the reviewer. And that's what you're doing. You're setting up the work sample for them that they will be uh, reviewing. So this is uh, uh, you know, a, a full novel of X number of pages. You are reading the middle section where this happens to the main character. Uh, and then you wanna say, what about that section that you selected is your strength. What is it in there that you want the reviewers to see that you feel very strongly about? And that speaks to um, either audio, video, or um, or the images. In terms of the process and the timeline, um, as I mentioned, the applications are going to be a screen for eligibility and completeness. Uh, and then the independent uh, peer review panel comprised of uh, working artists um, will, um, will then assess, review, assess, and score uh, the applications and make uh, recommendations um, for each of the um, for the applications, for the pool of applications. Uh, all application materials will be evaluated using the set criteria that I just went through, the three criteria. That's how all the applications are going to be reviewed. So you can see in the criteria that project and budget are not something that uh, the reviewers are looking for, okay? Um, Again, the deadline for the application is May the 9th at 5 p.m. I would say um, I would recommend if you're uh, submitting on that date on May 9th, you want to give yourself at least 45 minutes before you submit in case anything, in case there's in, there are any glitches, the system will notify you if there's a blank box or if you didn't fill something out so that you have time to go back fill it in, save it, and then submit it. Um, and um, the once the uh, deadline has passed uh, and the panel has done its work, recommendations have been uh, submitted and they've been finalized and approved, then the notification letters go out sometime between September, October of this year in 2023, and notification letters are sent to all the applicants. Um, thereafter, the pre-contracting happens, and I actually start working on that pre-contract work uh, as soon after notification as possible. Uh, I will say that if you are selected for funding, and if your plan is to uh, present your work uh, in the first quarter of 2024, then I would recommend you contact me ASAP so we can get started on that paperwork. Um, excuse me. The contracts, as I mentioned, excuse me, the contracts are two year contracts, and the contracts will start effective. January of 2024, maybe through March of um, they'll 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 be generated somewhere between January and March, depending on how soon you the uh, awardees contact me 
and we can get it all finalized. But uh, for all intents and purposes, the contracting dates are from January 2024 through November of 2025. And that's not only the dates of the contract, but it's the time frame that you have, as I mentioned, to research, develop, and to present the work. So you want to present the work uh, on or before November 1 uh, of either um, of 2025, so that you then have enough time to do the paperwork. You need to submit the invoice, the report, uh, all the requirements. Uh, we don't want, to, we want to make sure that we're allowing time for you to do that. And a few uh, details about the contract requirements. Uh, you will sign a two year contract. Uh, you and I will uh, develop and finalize the uh, defined project. Um, that you will be working on and presenting um, uh, at some point within the two year period. Um, so you want to, once the deadline is over, uh, if you're not yet sure what project um, you will, uh, idea you're going to develop or present, then that's something you want to work on uh, after the deadline. Should you get funded, you'll, you'll want to um, at least have some idea of what that is uh, and, and some of the details around that. If it is a remounted work, uh, which, it, which means you this uh, work has been presented before, then you do want, you know, what you and I will talk about is how is it substantially different from the last time it was presented because we do not want to repeat uh, a work that has already been presented to the public. We want something fresh and new. And so uh, substantially different is, is how I will define it. And I'm happy to, um, to answer uh, any questions you might have. Um, and uh, again, you do, as an award, award recipient, uh, you are required to have one public um, event. And um, and again, the 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 contract does ask for a what we're calling community partner. This is not the venue. The community partner is some entity out in the community. It does not have to be a nonprofit. It does not have to be social services. It hopefully is not an arts and cultural focused organization. We want. Um, to encourage artists to reach out to um, to agencies or entities out there uh, in the city who have who are not engaging in the arts, and it could be that maybe that's the theme of your work. So if your theme is about food justice, let's say, you know, maybe reaching out to uh, I'm just gonna this is just just an idea, but you might reach out to a food bank or you might reach out to PCC or, uh, uh, you know, any food related entity and uh, that that you want to bring into the fold and uh, into the fold and engage in the arts. And uh, again, I can talk about that more if you have other questions. Um, you will need to present uh, a public uh, event in the C city of Seattle city limits somewhere between January 2nd, 2024 and November 1, 2025. And again, I mentioned that November 1 date because we want to allow you time to get all of your ducks in order, all your, your final paperwork. You do have a final invoice, a report, uh, an evaluation. Uh, you need to get all of your promo materials together, images, um, all of these things take time, and uh, and so we want to make sure that there's there that you have had sub substantial enough time to get all of those uh, documents together. Lastly, compensation is paid in up to three installments, um, and the only parameter that we have with the three installments it can be less than two, it can be one. Some artists uh, invoice at the very end and do the full amount at the end, but you can divide them into three and that's fine. You wanna look at maybe the last 
the third and final invoice as probably the, the one with the least amount of money and the least amount that you can request at one time is a thousand dollars. So if you receive, if someone were to receive uh, an award of 5,000, they might decide to break it up into uh, first invoice 3,000, second invoice, um, uh, you know, uh, what did I say, 5,000? So 2,000, 2,000, and 1,000 might be uh, a breakdown, uh, just so you know, or there might be 4,000 and then 1,000, you know. Uh, so you do have some flexibility with the, um, with the, with the amounts, the uh, payments to be made. Uh, again, the payments are um, uh, more associated with tasks that you have completed. And, uh, and I can, again, answer, uh, clarify uh, during the Q&A if there are more questions about that. Uh, what these funds will not cover uh, are the lead of an organization and their work. So if a lead of an organization is applying here and it's work that will be presented, produced uh, by and about that organization, that is probably not a project. You will have to think of another project uh, to present uh, for these funds. Uh, it must be separate and, and distinguished from the organization's work. Um, these funds will not purchase equipment, software, or food. Um, also, the funds will not uh, pay for a fundraising event so or a benefit. So the public event that uh, comes sort of at the end of the uh, development of your work cannot be a benefit or a fundraiser uh, for another nonprofit, no matter how worthy. It just, that's just not something you can do. So the idea is that you're spending this money on the project on that gets you from point A to point B and presenting whatever, whatever all of those expenses might entail. Um, uh, and and just uh, and again, degree granting institutions or government run programs are not allowable uh, for these funds. And um, lastly, if you are currently a recipient of an award from one of our other programs in the office and still have an active contract, in other words, it has not yet you have not yet finished the work, you have not yet presented, and you have not yet been paid in full from that contract or their award, that um, is not allowable. So you, if you do have um, an award, a current active award and or contract, then you'll want to make sure that it's paid out, closed out, uh, completed uh, before the May 9th deadline. Okay, well, I'm going to leave my contact information up for just a little bit. Um, that really was the full contents of the PowerPoint. And um, I just also want to uh, share that I do have uh, Wednesday, every Wednesday, I have open uh, office hours, phone office hours from three to five. And this is for the purposes of answering any questions you might have about the application uh, or process, uh, any clarity that is needed. Uh, I'm happy to do that. It is on a first come first serve, so I don't make appointments. I just uh, leave your voicemail and, uh, and I will get back to you um, on that same day. And again, my number is 206-684. 7310. And my email address is irene.gomez at seattle.gov. Okay, and I think I can turn this off now. Find it at the bottom. Oops.
Okay, I'm not sure what happened to my. Can you? I don't know if you guys can see me or not. I cannot. I cannot see myself. Uh, Marshawn, can you guide me on what I need to do here? Yeah, it looks like you need to um, go over to the uh, where your little thing is on the side. Your um, strip and then go to the teams it's right above like your search bar not your uh, the screens the side of your computer right uh and where do i go i'm sorry and you're gonna go to it looks like the bottom icon that says the teams icon which is nine plus oh okay oh there oh ta-da thank you very much and then stop sharing Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. And it looks like we've got a couple uh, questions in the chat. Do you want to answer them now or you want to wait until later? Well, I thought that maybe we would take a five minute break. Okay. Um, and then come back and maybe um, have you do a quick walkthrough of Flux and maybe take any questions they might have. And then we can go through the chat. How does that sound? Works for me. Um, if you want to type in the um, one question, which is easy peasy to answer, is if you want to, um, somebody wants to know your office hours, if you want to type that in the chat, that way that's in there. And yes, to answer Anastasi's question, it is being recorded and we're going to put it up on the website. Oh, there it is. Okay. So yeah, it's 340. Let's go ahead and take a, a five minute stretch and or bio break. Okay, technically 341. <laughs> and so if folks want to come back at 346 and we'll We'll do all the Q&A and the flux stuff after that. So, yay, break time, stretch, Thank water. You. See you in about five minutes. Thank you for suggesting that, Marshawn.
Hey, Elliot, we're on break right now, so everybody will be coming back at about 3.46, um, just so you know, so don't feel like uh, you're you're missing anything or wondering why no one's talking. Okay, I appreciate uh, that. Thank you. <laughs> it will be, it's being recorded, so you'll be able to watch the first half. Um, Perfect. I appreciate that. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Okay. I hope, hope you're doing well. Haven't seen you in eons. <laughs> I know. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for saying hi. I can't see people's pictures right now, but um, I'll just let Nobody's, everybody do the break and then. Yeah, see. and nobody has their camera on anyway, so, because it's oh. all on a PowerPoint. Got it. Okay. So. Bye. <laughs> Hello. Hey. Hello, 808 phone number. We're currently on break, but we should be back in a minute or so. Um, just so you know, this is being recorded, so we'll post the whole thing on our webpage, so you'll be able to see the first half. Um, you'll be jumping in with the second half where we're covering the actual application process in Flux. Hi, thank you so much. Sorry, I had some trouble getting in, and then maybe because it was on break, I wasn't able to jump into the meeting no i mean we just went on break at, at 3 40 so but teams is a pain in the butt so it's not unusual <laughs> okay cool thank you so much okay hello everybody is everybody back we'll um start this second half of the session um would like to invite my colleague uh marshawn to talk a little bit about uh, the Flux online system, setting up a new account, and uh, also just any questions you might have if you have started an account or have started the application. Marshawn. So uh, I'm gonna give folks just a couple more seconds, make sure everybody's back. Looks like everybody is muted. Um, 808, I'm just going to go ahead and put you in mute just in case because I want to get feedback because this thing is a pain in the butt, as you well know. <laughs> oh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me make sure that is up. I do believe I've got it. Okay. It's lunchtime. All right. So, like Irene said earlier, we are, oh, hold on. Got one more person coming. Hi, Misha. Just so you know, um, we are recording the session, so you will be able to watch what we what the first half was. Um, right now, we're getting ready to start with the um, flux section and how to uh, do an application and all that kind of stuff. So you'll be able to watch the whole thing later. And what now? Oh, there's no PowerPoint running right now. Marianne, gone. <laughs> OK, so. Hold on, multitasking. There's no PowerPoint running at the moment. It was turned off. So now we're gonna, now I'll be sharing my screen so you'll be able to see stuff. So let me also introduce myself. Um, I'm Marshawn. I am the office gremlin. I am the tech demon. So if you are having trouble with tech, it's me that you'll be uh, talking to. Um, I have no formality whatsoever. So I talk like a gremlin. 
Um, and so now we're going to be walking through the joy that is flux. Um, so one caveat, I see a lot of familiar names in here and a lot of people that I don't know. Um, flux is the city of Seattle. So the whole city's um, online grants portal. If you already have an account with Flux, you do not need to create a new one. That will cause a duplicate, and then we have to go through the work on the back end, the admin team, which I'm a part of, of merging your accounts. Please don't do it. Um, if you have an account already, just go ahead and log in. If you're having trouble getting in, you can go ahead and reset your password, but do not create a new account. For folks that have never created an account in Flux, this will be the website. I will make sure to copy that and drop that in the chat. Um, you'll go to this. Um, you can also find this link on the, <clears throat> excuse me, City Artist webpage. It'll either be flat on the page itself or it'll be in the guidelines and the FAQs. Um, so there's multiple places to access that link. Um, what you will do then is create an account now. and we need your first name, last name, and email. Those are all required. And I must impress, another thing that I also do is process the W-9s for the office. So if you are having a contract with us and you want to get paid, I'm gonna say it, we need your government name. Please don't put a nickname. Please don't put any of that. You will also be hearing from me if it's incorrect and we can't process your W-9. So first name, last name, email. Um, phone number is optional, but again, if something goes wrong, it's a good way to get in touch with you. Your email doesn't work. Um, mailing address, city, all of this, that is completely optional. Then you will hit submit request. There will be a pop-up that says, thank you for creating a profile. Um, you will get a confirmation email. For some folks, it goes directly to their inbox. For others, it goes to an like an other or a junk mail box. Please check all of those because the system will not resend that email once it's already sent it out. And so then once you click that, you'll be able to set up your password and then get into the system. Um, what you will be directed to is directly to grantee because unless we set you up as a reviewer, you won't have that privilege. So you'll just go straight bypassing this box to grantee. And you will see this. This is the main page for the whole of City of Seattle. These are all the departments that are currently on Flux, Department of Neighborhoods, um, us, Office of Arts and Culture, OED. Uh, <laughs> SDOT and Seattle IT. So you can apply to any of the grants that are open on any of these departments. Come on, don't, don't you dare start now. Oh, I don't want to have to hit refresh. My computer says it's been running too long. It needs some sleep. <laughs> there we go. So you'll click the Office of Arts and Culture. That will take you to our homepage. And again, you can look at all of our opportunities on that. And then here is the City Artist link. You're going to start new City Artist funding application. And it has all of this stuff and it's Pretty self-explanatory what all it requires. Um, again, as it as I said earlier, the W-9 contract, all of that is going to be in the legal name. You can put a DBA or an LLC here, but for being able to process stuff, we need that government name. Um, all of these, again, self-explanatory and agree you want to make sure you click yes on that and then this is all of the artist questions 
when you see a red zone, that is, yes, I'm going to be technical here, a compliance warning, which means it will not submit if it isn't filled out properly. And the system will let you know if you either try to save and close or submit that uh, you've got an error somewhere. Um, there are multiple places for you to upload things. For one is like the artist resume, add files. Can't see anything. And so you want to make sure that you choose everything that you need properly. And then upload. It doesn't disappear automatically with these things. You do have to click the X, but as long as it says upload complete, it's uploaded. And that will all appear down at the bottom as documents. And then the narrative questions here. You can drag and make these bigger, but that will not change the character count. If you go over the limit on that, it will also let you know that you're over and it will not let you submit. Um, Irene spoke earlier about work samples. You will upload work samples here. Um, whoever it is, um, can you please mute yourself because I'm getting feedback. Um, you want to add an audio work sample and this is for all work samples. You will have a pop up like this and be able to add stuff with the Video audio, we require a web address link. So a Vimeo, a YouTube, um, other websites that have it, that host it, um, that will be required for the other um, ones, a literary or whatnot, work samples, image and writing, those you can upload. So you'll be able to see how to upload image file upload, multiple pop-up boxes, again, add files, all that kind of thing. And then once you are um, done with that, you have any additional things here, applicant demographics. I am just going to hit cancel because I've already I've already got a gimme on this one. But once you you can save it and then come back and up in the corner, which I didn't do, um, you will have a little edit button. Actually, I do have a pending request. Um, I don't know who has their mic on because I can't see. Can you please mute yourself? I'm getting feedback. Oh, why are you not? Ugh. So another thing to note about Flux is that refresh is often your best friend because sometimes it wants to be stupid. There we go. OK, so here we have the edit button. You can go back in and. Yeah, somehow I edit and muted myself. You can edit, you can hit the edit and then go back in and re, uh, continue your application if you need to. If you just hit like save and close, and you need to finish it later. And then once you're done, you can go ahead and submit. Now, the key thing to remember, um, and it does happen to a lot of folks, is that as soon as this finishes loading, sometime this year, is that any applications that you are in process with will be over here. Please do not go back to the main page and submit or hit the button of start a new application that will not get you back to the one that you are currently working on. It will just literally generate a new application. So this gray sidebar is where you would manage all of any applications that you have started for any grant that you have. Um, and then, like I said, when you're ready to submit, you would just hit submit application. Yes, we don't need a note. And I have a feeling this one's going to bounce back because I don't think I have everything filled out for this. No, nope, I'm wrong. <laughs> so this is what you will see once you successfully submit it. And that's when it's been submitted. You don't have to worry about it anymore. And then it's just up to whenever the deadline is and we take it from there. 
Um, if you are awarded, you will eventually be seeing the grants and contracts tab. Um, and it will have how many ever active. So it would be one in this case for city artists. Um, any progress reports that you may need or when you get to the point of needing a payment request or invoicing, it will show up here. So that, my friends, is Flux in a nutshell. Do we have any Flux questions? I'll take those first. All right, so it looks like we don't have any flux questions, but we have general chat questions. So Irene, I will start reading um, the chat questions and we'll take it from there. You ready? You're muted. Thank you. Return All right, camera. Irene, no, the no. first okay. question is can you talk about the parameters that are allowed by the applicant for the public event? For example, having an art event that is a public event with the intention of centering BIPOC folks. The parameter of the event is um, really that it be a public event. So in other words, uh, the general public needs to know about it. So getting the word out is really important and doing that in uh, an advance notice uh, so that it does give people a, a chance to fit it into their schedule or make plans. Um, and um, you mentioned um, the event can happen anywhere in Seattle. Um, so there are no parameters about that as long as it's in Seattle. Um, and uh, the duration of the event is completely uh, up to the artist. Um, and that there is one event is really all that the city is requesting is one event. Sometimes artists have done more than one. They've done um, maybe either an exhibit that's that might be a month long or longer, or um, they might have back-to-back -back readings at different locations, but really all we are asking for is one, one event, uh, because we know that is uh, it's expensive. It's expensive doing multiple events uh, or two evening events, but um, uh, but just so you know, it's just one event that's required. Did I answer your question? Hi, Irene. Um, I'm the one who, an who uh, asked the question. Um, mm -hmm. I think one part of the question that wasn't answered for me was um, the intention to center folks. So. If, for example, we had a public event and we're like, oh, we're going to center women in this event or we're going to have a public event, we're going to center uh, disabled folks in this event. I'm just wondering if if we have that in our public event, those intentions, would that mean that our application would be not accepted because it wouldn't be seen as a public event or would that still be acceptable? Well, the idea is that a broad swath of, of the public is invited to it because these are tax based dollars. So that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, the application does not ask you about outreach promotion or who you're gearing this to. Uh, so the reviewers are not going to be assessing your application based on your outreach and PR. But that. Yeah. Conversation is something that that you and I, if you are selected for funding, that you and I would discuss uh, when we're creating the contract language. OK, and I'm going to repeat this question for those of us who uh, those who joined late. Um, is this session being recorded? I was not able to make it to the first part. Yes, it's being recorded. Um, which is also um, one of the reasons why I went uh, more in depth on the flux than I did in the last version. Um, I think this will be the one that makes it onto the uh, web page for City Artists, just because I did it like that on purpose. So if you missed the first half, um, it will be posted hopefully um, this week. 
um, but next week at the absolute latest, and you will be able to watch the whole thing. Um, next question, and I think we got slammed with questions, so there's a lot of them, Irene. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, does city artist funding have to cover the total cost of the project, or can it be one of several sources for of funding for the project? No, the uh, expectation is not that the award, the city artist award covers all of your project costs. Um, you know, unless uh, all you need is the last, you know, 2000, the last 5000, because you've got you've already got funding for the other aspects of your project. But the expectation is no. Um, but, you know, you do want to consider what what out is a reasonable for the level of the project that you are going to be proposing. All right, next question, and this one is a whammy. Um, for interdisciplinary <laughs> artists, not whammy and bad, but like it's, mm -hmm. it's one of those kind of almost FA, FAQ questions. For interdisciplinary artists, does it matter if one of the disciplines is not being awarded this year? I'm a painter, dancer, filmmaker, so I'm wondering if my app should focus more on painting and film and less on dance. When you, you discuss your work and your practice in the narrative, um, there will be the peer review artists that are sitting around the table reviewing uh, your application and discussing it will be literary, media, film and visual artists there will, will there won't be any performing artists uh, around the table that will be next year so um so i would say you want to speak to um your your visual and media um artwork but you know if if you're blending all of these three together in a new venture you know you definitely want to uh to mention that um and if if you feel like um the question doesn't fully get answered um the person whoever's question it is please feel free to jump in because <laughs> otherwise yes. i would just bop to the next question <laughs> absolutely yes um, Thank you. Next question is um, from Natalie, and they're asking um, if I am currently in a certificate program at UW, can I apply to the grant? Okay, good question. Let me follow up with you, um, uh, Natalie, if I could. And I don't know. Uh, we'll ha we have. Did you register for this session? I assume you did. Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah, okay. I registered okay. under a different email. Okay, great. Well, well, we'll have your name on the registration list. So I am definitely writing down your first name. It's okay, great. Natalie I will Hall. follow up with you. Okay, terrific. Thank you. And uh, this question is actually ironically asked a lot. It was asked in the last one. So Irene, you will <laughs> have this answer ready like in a heartbeat. <laughs> if you request a certain amount, does the panel have the ability to approve applications for a lower amount or is it all or nothing? Yeah, it's pretty much all or nothing. If, if you're selected for funding, uh, you will receive 100% of what you request. That's that's not you're not going to receive less, you're not going to receive more, but you're going to receive exactly what you requested. So again, just as long as it you know you want to think about um, the request reflecting wherever the stage of development is of your idea or your venture. Next question: <clears throat> If we are a mixed media artist and have different formats slash types of past work, is it okay to include those 
or must all past work be similar to what art uh, to what artwork we will be working on? Ugh, too much alliteration. If approved. For example, if I was a block print artist working, hoping to create a ceramics video, would I only be a allowed to submit block print work? No, I think you can submit. The work sample is really your choice. Uh, I think um, uh, if you're, uh, what you want to submit is what you consider to be your best work, and that may or may not be, um, you know, especially if you're an interdisciplinary artist or if you're a visual artist, but working a lot of different art forms within or, uh, you know, uh, within visual arts, it's a big, big category. Um, then again, you want to think in terms of your strongest work, what you want the reviewers to see, especially if they don't know if they're not familiar with you or your work. Uh, and then if there's uh, something in there that is representative sketches of work to come, you know, kind of your work in progress, then you may may want to include that just to give a sense of, you know, the ideas that are sort of going around uh, percolating, so to speak, for you. All right, the next one is kind of a, a you question, Irene. Um, the draft review time slots are all sold out. Uh, any more chance time, more times may open up. Uh, well, I do have, as I mentioned earlier, I do have uh, phone office hours every Wednesday from three to five. It's a first come, first serve. And uh, those are certainly not filling up uh, to the max, um, but that's another opportunity. And again, if you call and the, and the line is busy, just leave a voicemail and I will call back. All right, next one's a me question. Um, Elliot, mm -hmm. I will send you an email because um, Flux is a pain in the ass. And um, we'll connect about getting your password reset. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah, it's, yeah, I get it. Um, another one that we had uh, last time, how many artists are you selecting? Well, the average number uh, that has been funded is anywhere between 23 and 26, somewhere in that range. And um, for this particular cycle, for the um, literary media and, and visual arts cycle, uh, it has been the kind of high volume cycle. So we have received uh, about 200, a little over 200 applications. Um, and out of those 200, like I said, anywhere between 23 and 26, somewhere in there, are um, have been the number of uh, awards. Um, next question is, what information is most helpful in the work sample descriptions? Well, the work sample descriptions, I believe there are instructions or suggested uh, bullet items of things to include in the sample description. Uh, first of all, the title of the work, the year of the work, your role in that work, um, the full uh, sort of uh, extension of the work. If it's a, a video clip and it's a 15 minute piece and you're submitting two and a half, then you want to say this is a 15 minute piece. You are going to be watching two and a half. Um, uh, just very broadly what the the storyline is, you know, very, very broadly. Just remember that the project, the work sample description is not another opportunity to tell your story. It's really what you're you're wanting to do is you want to set up the work sample for the reviewer to see. It's like, what am I looking at? Uh, you're looking at, um, you know, the first uh, two and a half minutes of a 15 minute clip. It is a comedy or whatever it is. Uh, and this is where the main character is doing something. Uh, and if there's something unique and special that you feel very strongly about, whether it's the narrative or the camera angle, whatever it is that you feel you did especially well, 
say that <laughs> um, and hone in on that with your with your sample. So be very intentional and strategic about the two and a half minute clip or five minute clip, whichever you decide. Um, did that did that answer your question or can I add more information to that? And Holly, that was your question. Yes, yeah, sorry, it took me a second to unmute. Um, it was helpful. I'm a visual artist, so it was more geared toward um, other than you know, title, medium, year. Is there more information that would be helpful, or is it better just to leave it with those that kind of information? No, you can say, for instance, with, with visual arts, you can say if this was from a body of work that was a collaborative show, a solo show, a thematic show, um, uh, and the, the scale of the work, you know, which you probably will include. Uh, but if there are a range of, uh, you know, sizes, then you want to say from this size to that size. Um, I will also, also add on a technical note with work samples mm -hmm. um, is that um, if you are doing multiple work samples and you want them to be viewed in order, you want to say one of X because the work samples don't, the descriptions don't always line up in the system with the work samples. So you're not going to have um, happy birthday surprise with the picture image of happy birthday surprise. Um, they might get a little bit out of order. So make sure one that when you go into the you do the title of the work sample you're doing that it matches the file that you're uploading, if, especially if you're doing an upload. Because um, if it gets out of sync, then either admins on the back end have to try and make sure that when it comes to the panel, they can see it or the panelists have to be able to match it up. Um, and like I said, if you're doing multiple, make sure you put one of how many ever you're doing um, in the order you want them viewed. Yes, in our past, uh, we don't, we don't, uh, um, unfortunately, we don't have the capacity to give a, a little caption or description for each piece. So you kind of have to give a broad description, so to speak. That's why I suggested a range from, from small to medium to large, or if they're all one size, then you want to say that, you know, medium size or whatever, just to give a little, just a little bit knowledge, more knowledge about what the reviewer is looking at. Any other, um, any other questions with regard to the work sample description? We do have actually one more that's kind of along the same vein. Okay. Um, a clarification about it. I'm applying to produce a short film. Should I provide an expert yeah, of my previous film or the script for this one, or a little bit of both. Yeah, it's uh, you can do a little bit of both. Uh, just just know that the the script for a film um, is slightly different than for a play. Uh, so, uh, but you can do sort of half and half, as it were. So you can you know just um, for instance, this is an example. You could do a two and a half, maybe three minute clip of a past work and then maybe four or five pages of the uh, of the script so you need to select that those four or five pages very carefully and just to reiterate um in case folks have kind of um maybe missed it or it hasn't been drilled down the total amount of what the reviewers will be seeing is five minutes correct me if i'm wrong irene mm -hmm a total amount of five minutes of work samples. So choose carefully. That did not go as deep as I wanted it to. That sucked. Um, just to clarify, is this for solo artists only? Or what if someone wanted to apply as a duo or collective? One person applies and, and one person speaks to their individual practice. Um, individual work, individual growth, development over time. So it's, again, this is not group funding. There are other pockets of money, larger 
pockets of money for groups and organizations to apply to. That's why this is for individuals, because there's not a, a lot of money for individuals. So uh, if what you're proposing is for a group, um, I would say, you know, um, the description in the, the narrative of the questions will be about the applicant artist. And that's what's going to get funded. The applicant artist is going to get funded. Um, and I'm happy to answer more questions about that. Um, kind of give more clarity about that if you like. And I think that actually would almost answer this next question. Um, okay. I'm the editor in chief and founding member um, to a comics newspaper printed here in Seattle. It's a long question, so I'm sort of shortening it. My apologies, Jake. Um, would new issues with different themes and unique events connected to, oh, connected to the release of the new issue work qualify me, my organization, Scarf Comics newspaper for this grant? Again, it's about you. It is not about Scarf. Um, so you want, uh, that's, what the narrative questions are asking you to talk about your work, uh, past, current, and future, and uh, and how uh, your practice has evolved over time, and uh, and the work is about you. Um, so again, I'm happy to you know if you want to give me a call, give you a little bit, you can give me more information. I can lend a little more insight that's more specific. Um, to you, uh, I also wanted to mention with regard to the um, five minutes for a work sample, five minutes obviously is very clear for audio and visual, I mean video, but for visual, it's a maximum of eight images. That's equivalent to five minutes is eight images. And the equivalent for literary sample for a written sample is 10 pages. So it's five minutes. 10 pages, eight images. So if you're submitting sort of a combination, cut those in half. Four pages, uh, um, excuse me, five pages and, um, and four images, uh, two and a half minutes of video, everything is cut in half. Um, and you, you don't want to, um, you want to steer clear of, any montage that just gives, you know, quick snapshots of something because the reviewers will not have enough time to see something develop over time. It's it's uh, it's it's great, I guess, if you want to show the breadth of everything you've ever done. But that is not what the reviewers uh, that's not the best way for a reviewer to assess your work because they can't see something e develop even over a period of two and a half to three minutes. It's, you can actually see something evolve over that period of time. So uh, just wanted to add that. OK, let's see, um, which then sort of leads to the, right to the next question, um, <laughs> which I think you really did just answer. Um, for film, would a broader showreel be preferable or would you recommend a longer portion of one piece? You know, that is really up to the applicant artist to determine. Um, you have, so I, I'm assuming that your question is submit five full minutes of one clip or uh, or three and two of two other ones. And that is completely uh, up, up to you. It depends on the work sample and what it is that you want the reviewer to see or to learn about your work. OK. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Next question is, can the funding cover the cost of the venue for the public? Yeah public event or is it eh, where did I, I lost my space or is it just meant to cover the cost of personnel should costs be outlined in the application uh okay so i'm going to start with the last question because that's the easiest one no not more you just broke up irene you do not submit anything about a project i'm sorry i said you just broke up so i don't think they heard that part Okay. 
so no um, reference to a budget and no reference to a project. Um, but I, I will uh, uh, clarify that if awarded the funds um, two or five or eight thousand dollars that you are awarded that money can go to pay for artist fees for administration for publicity for space rental for equipment rental um, to hire a photographer or a videographer to document your work um, it will pay for insurance or any permits or licenses um, so if you need to renew your business license uh, 2024 2025 you can use this money to do that um, uh, so those are some and travel okay uh, if you're collaborating um, and some of your collaborators live outside of Seattle whether it's Vashon or Bellevue or Tacoma and they need to come in for you to work together and collaborate uh, then that mileage can be covered if you're doing research and you need to fly to um, New Mexico to meet with a you know um, uh, another fellow artist uh, peer artist to interview them or whatever that's uh, that's also included in the um, in the expense so really even uh, any any costs like the venue and certainly uh, I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, once the deadline has passed and and you have uh, an idea of you know your work is in progress and it will be finished within five months or whatever, and so you know you're going to be presenting, then you want to start getting your ducks in order. What venue? What's available? What are the costs? What's the insurance? And that's the other thing that's covered is insurance. Um, so all of those details you want to start getting your ducks in order, especially if you know it's going to be presented uh, in 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 the next year or two. OK, this is a, a good one. Um, mm -hmm. I see that a high value is placed on taking a new direction with our artistic practice. And by nature, a work sample reflects our previous older work. So I'm wondering how reviewers balance this if the work sample doesn't reflect the new direction. Um, well, the, applic the application narrative and description don't necessarily focus on uh, a new direction. I think if there is a new direction, you do want to talk about it and only in the context of letting the reviewer know where the continued growth OK, of your ideas, of your work, of your practice. Um, uh, but uh, but that that is not one of the criteria that it be new. Um, uh, I think I mentioned it could be a remounted work, so it's actually an old work, but it's it's substantially significantly different from what it was before. Um, so uh, but you know i would love to uh find out if i uh if you read something in the guidelines that led you to think that it had that it was focused on new ideas whoever whoever posed that question if they're if you're still here hey i mean yeah it's it's john hildy no i was i guess i was just getting a general sense that um the application was the narrative was looking for how are we expanding or changing our process and I realize that might take that might be a small amount <laughs> or a larger amount depending. right yeah e exactly okay okay well th thanks for clarifying that yeah because I think um uh you know the the narrative is again you're you're just continuing to tell the story of your um evolution of your practice and and your work uh via what's coming up you know it and it could be the the work that you are have in progress or the work that is yet uh, still a seed of an idea in your head uh, wherever it might be um you know where is that taking you you know uh what new skill sets what new networks um are you you know experimenting with but it does not need to be um you know, uh, because you're not talking about the project, you know, in the narrative, you're not really focusing on the project. You're focusing on you and your your skill set, your practice. So. 
Does that help? Yeah, it, it does seem like there's a value though on, on the narrative wanting to show how we're evolving or changing from the past. I guess it's a nuance of like how much that is. For me specifically, I'm thinking about like if I've made fiction films and I'm wanting to move into uh, documentary storytelling, for example, like it's not mm -hmm. a completely different medium, but the the work sample might not be an example of exactly what I'm going to do next. Exactly. So if that were the case, you definitely want to talk about that mm -hmm. in the narrative, because even though it's uh, going from documentary to something else, but it's still media film, it's still something new and different. And uh, and maybe there are, there are new techniques or other techniques or approaches that you might take that would be different. Uh, and that's OK, because it doesn't have to mean that every element of your work or your practice has changed. It's like, what is evolving? Because for some artists, the technique is the same. The themes change with other artists. The themes change and the and the technique stays the same. So um, so it, it can be, you know, any any uh, any aspect of your practice and, and not to forget that there are there are. Um, the scale of the work, if it's going from a small, medium to large scale, that's going to impact. Uh, administratively, it's going to impact you because you have bigger budgets, you have more people to manage, uh, just more, more to juggle, right? You have a lot more to juggle. And so, uh, and maybe even networks, you know, expanded next networks. So that could be a new aspect of your work. Also, if you're, if you presented uh, uh, over time in a standard professional performing, I mean, not performing arts, but uh, art venue, artistic venue, and you're now switching and making your art or presenting your work out in the community, that is a, that's very different. And it taps a whole different set of skills, whole different way of promoting. So, um, so again, you know, it could be any aspect, but I would not um, uh, the expectation is not that all of those things are changing, the, you know, but whatever is changing for you, even in a in a small way you want to talk about and what triggered it, what prompted you to make that change? You know, those are the questions uh, or the responses that um, that make a co the compelling story, right? Great. Thanks, Irene. Sure. Thanks for coming. We've got like one more question. Um, okay. Can you talk about the resume? I ask because it says max three pages, um, I believe, and that seems like a lot. Plus, oh. I am also a multi genre artist, so I don't want to put too much or too little. Mm -hmm. Any additional guidance on the resume part of the application? OK, well, thank you. I think I might change that wording. Um, I think what with max three pages means is up to three pages. So it can be one page. It can be two pages or two and a half pages, but probably no more than three pages. So um, so if that eases your mind, <laughs> I will change that wording for sure. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, They replied, cool, thank you. So I guess that. <laughs> that All right, the sounds good. And I will change that. I will change that wording so it's more clear that it's up to three pages, but it doesn't have to be three pages. Um, so uh, also, I just wanted to make a comment because I, I uh, remembered when this resume question came up is you want to be careful in your narrative when you're responding to the questions that you're not revisiting your resume. Tr try very hard to not, you know, repeat what's already in your resume because they the the reviewers will have your resume to look at your history, where you have presented, who you've presented with. Um, so they will have that information. So the narrative you really want to talk about, you know, you and your work and uh, the evolution and the, the vision of where you're going and why and where did this change come from or all these changes come from. So, um, so just want to uh, make that note. Anything else? Any final uh, questions or other questions? 
Speak now or email your piece. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It looks like we've got somebody with a hand up. Marianne, you want to shoot? Yes, thank you. It, I was uh, trying to figure out how to type it and I really couldn't figure it out. So back to the question that someone had asked. Uh, this is Marianne. Um, thank you for today. Back to the question someone had asked about the uh, amount of the, the award amounts. So mm -hmm. if let's say I put down 5,000, I just want to make sure I understand. And mm -hmm. um, the panel just really loves it. Um, but they're like, um, uh, I don't know if this would happen then, Irene. So it's not like, oh gosh, we've are, you know, we've budgeted it out and all we have left for this person is 2000. We really like what they did. So we're just going to offer them the 2000. It's like, like you said, all or nothing, but I also like, um, wanted to, you know, just make sure that, yeah, there's no way, like if I put something too high or too low, um really we drive how much we we are asking for and the panel won't adjust that figure anyway or or the money won't run out after 25 people you know or anything like that i just something seems fuzzy to me so i was just trying to understand okay yeah no the the there the amount requested is set in stone it that is not going to change um and uh, you know there is a range of uh, of awarded artists because a lot of it uh, really just depends on how many eight thousands, how many five thousands, how many two thousands. So that varies, right, from cycle to cycle. Um, uh, but but the amount in but the amount that each individual artist requests is not going to change. That's going to remain static. And that's where it was interesting, because if we're not sharing what project idea we have, which might look different, you know, then mm -hmm. um, with my narrative, how and I might ask for an amount, um, then how would they know which like, oh, gosh, they're really asking for more of they're asking for less. Um, they don't because they don't have a project. Right. So. so it's more your story. It's just the story. OK, it's the story. It's, All right. it's telling that compelling story of your art. And, and you know, as I mentioned, what inspired this change? What made you go pivot from here to here? And now you're going to pivot over there, which is, you know, it's just, um, you know, how the growth has occurred and why. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and I just wanted to, if we have just a few minutes, I, I do want to um, share because I know that uh, every cycle there are new artists, maybe who have never applied to City Artists, but um, this program went through a major restructure uh, based on feedback from artists who basically said projects, budgets, uh, PR plans, time consuming, so time consuming. Can't you simplify this process? And, uh, and, and the second thing was, can you make it so that whatever we request we get so that we're not applying for five and then we get three? So that was loud and clear. The feedback from artists was loud and clear uh, that the applications were taking way too long. And then in the end, they might get less than what they requested. So we changed both of those uh, and made the application more simple. Uh, you still there is a project and a budget that you need to submit, but only if you get funded. So it's not at the application level. It's if you get funded, then then you've got to work a little bit more because you've got to give me a project and a budget. Uh, but um, uh, so that so just wanted to give some history, some background about where these changes came for the program. So it came from your peers. And I'm always, always open to any feedback or ideas of how, because it's it's a work in progress. We're always modifying the application and the questions and requirements. So if you have any feedback, uh, either before or after the deadline, all of all of your comments are welcome because we we want to, uh, you know, we want to improve what we're doing. We want to make it 
more accessible, easier, and uh, clear for everybody. So, okay. So your input is um, welcome. And, and here's a piggyback question off of that. Um, okay. Is it decreasing my chances to get any funding at all when applying for a popular funding category? Ooh, well, what's a popular funding category? I don't understand, you know. <laughs> I guess uh, maybe then literary versus visual or something like that? Like, is there um, one more you popular? Know, the, yeah, I think that, the as I mentioned before, the criteria and the questions, which I, I tried to spend quite a bit of time describing and giving information about the questions and the criteria, because really that is how the reviewers are going to be uh, onboarded onto their the process of uh, assessing, reviewing, assessing, and scoring the applications. Is it's on this this story, this this uh, overarching story of your of your practice and your work. Uh, it's not about money. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure if that, uh, if I gave a, a clear answer to your question, please let me know and I'm happy to elaborate maybe <laughs> a little bit more. No, it looks I like think that. They're oh, typing an answer, maybe. I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, I was just actually, I just uh, scrolled down and I uh, was reading the question, rereading the question. There are several. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. There are, yeah, several slots. And you mentioned that some are more popular from year to year. Hmm. Are you, are you, uh, are you saying uh, disciplines, different disciplines? Is that what you're referring to? I don't know that it's more popular. Uh, I think the disciplines, the number of applications that we get vary from cycle to cycle. Um, this cycle, the visual, literary, and media cycle, uh, has the highest volume. There's more, there's a higher response from, from the arts community. Uh, and I'm not sure if visual, literary, and media artists are more proactive and out there <laughs> applying um, uh, or what, but this, uh, this cycle has the highest number of applications. Um, so um, I, I don't know that it's a popularity, but it's just uh, who's who's out there being super, super proactive. Um, looks like uh, they're asking about money slots. So like, um, I know one thing you've often said is that like a lot of people will apply for the $8,000 grant, less mm -hmm. people the five. Like, I think that's kind of what it seems like maybe that's what they're trying to ask. Oh, the, the amounts. Um, I guess, um, Pretty regularly, the highest requested amount is eight thousand, um, and uh, five thousand would be the next, and then two thousand would be the least. Um, so again, um, a lot of it depends on where the idea uh, or the venture, what what status it is at the time of application, and figuring out. Okay, I'm going to need, you know, X number of space, size space. It's going to cost me this much. Ideally, I want to present my work in this space. How much is it going to cost? Um, I've got three artists. I've got 20 artists collaborating with me. I mean, so many that, you know, um, so, so many factors, you know, to determine um, uh, what, your costs are going to be, and certainly the larger scale project is is just uh, going to cost more, you know. But some artists also have uh, um, either secured other funding or plan to do crowdsourcing or whatever whatever uh, avenues are available. Um, so, and, and a lot of that is just, do you have the time <laughs> to to do all this? You know, it's uh, and so you want to take all of that into consideration. 
when applying, but um, I hope I have answered your question that it wasn't so much popularity, but amount, I guess, value. Yeah. Uh, thank you for clarifying that. Um, and then uh, we have a feedback question. Question, okay. if we have not been approved for funding in the past, is there any support on feedback on past applications that may help us with this current application? Yeah, we give, uh, I actually schedule feedback uh, appointments uh, after every cycle. Um, and that is open to er every applicant who applies, whether they got funded or not. Uh, the I, I can say that the majority of the calls are to folks who do not get funded. Um, and um, so, but I give feedback to uh, awarded artists as well. I just give first priority to those that do not get funded because I want to give that feedback so they can go and uh, apply somewhere else. And yes, I, I, I can give feedback if you've applied in the past. Just depends on how far back <laughs> you apply. We'd have to do some digging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, it is 445. Are there any last minute questions? Um, and just so you know, I don't know if you guys will see this. This has been um, recorded and there is a transcription. So a lot of these um, frequently asked questions from between this session and the last session. Um, I may compile that and we may be able to put that on the website. I'm not promising that <laughs> because it's not me who handles the implementation of putting things on the, the website. Um, Right. But there will be some place where these questions live. That much I, I can say. <laughs> right. And I just want to remind everybody that I did include my um, phone off open office hours on the phone every Wednesday from three to five. And I put my phone number in there. Uh, I'm just going to repeat it again. It's 206-684-731. You blinked out and you got frozen, Irene. I don't know if it's just me or if she's completely frozen. Really she's frozen. frozen for us too. Okay. Well, I'm pasting what she had said earlier in the chat. <laughs> that means it's her internet, not mine. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yeah, that's her office hours are in there. And I think she just disappeared. I don't know if she's going to try and come back in. Um, but that is it in a nutshell. Um, if you have any more questions, um, you can reach out to her. The phone number is there. I will okay. put her email address, um, in the chat. Thank you, Marshawn. I don't know what happened. I disappeared. Your computer said I'm done working for the day. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting here, uh, but I could tell that I was not accessible so okay so you posted okay the chat went away that's what it is okay okay um so thank you everybody for coming and again i um uh, welcome your calls emails uh and questions thank you so much this was really helpful absolutely absolutely I will call you tomorrow, Irene. Okay, sounds good, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming.
so you are stopping your um now stopping the recording or